Hi, my name is Corey Mayo, licensed realtor with Monument Sotheby's, and welcome to Who's in the House, your podcast for everything coastal Delaware. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. That way you're updated every time I upload new podcasts or videos. And if at any time you have questions, feel free to email us at info at who's in the house, D-E as in Delaware.com. You can also call or text 302 466 Five five one one. Now sit back and enjoy this episode of Who's in the House. Yes, for residential, but also for commercial. Okay, it's commercial as in like commercial, commercial like businesses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I never even businesses. thought about. Yeah. Oh that, yeah, that, we that, actually that we actually have installed solar on some a, a number of prominent um, business and not for profit organ, organizations here really? in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, one you see every single day that you go over uh, drive north on Route One, which is the Catholic Church right there at, Na- at the Nassau Bridge, yep. uh, which is uh, a very large installation. Uh, just recently, we commissioned um, Shall We Bounce on Route Nine Four Hundred Four. Hmm. Um, but there's a half dozen churches, um, many of the clubhouses in communities where you see solar. So Sawgrass comes to mind. Yeah. Um, there are a bunch of others. All of the we've done all of those. Um, Atlantic Liquors has has solar on it that we installed, and of course, obviously, the Shell Brothers offices yeah. has. We I think we have three or four hundred panels total on those. Yeah, and so all of their electric uses. All no, of the I electric never. Uses I, I, I guess just because of the thought process, like it's mm-hmm. typically thought of as a residential product, and mm-hmm. never thought of it from yeah. a, from a commercial side. I mean, I know yeah. obviously they do like the like counties or whatever do like the the solar farms mm-hmm. or whatever yeah. they call them you know but yeah i never thought from like an individual actually, company actually for commercial entities especially who own their own property um, depending on certain variable factors um, you can actually offset 95 percent of the cost the initial cost of solar uh through grants uh state state um Fund, uh, state-backed financing, uh, and then when you get into tax credits and depreciation, uh, a, a commercial system will pretty much pay for itself in under eighteen months. Wow! Um, and so you're and and considering we're now talking about instead of a typical home having say a hundred a residence having one hundred and fifty dollar a month electric bill, you're talking about you know seven eight nine hundred dollars a month sure. savings, and that's achievable. Uh, again, it, it, there are variable factors, roof, available space, etc. But you know, for some of our customers, we we actually save them a tremendous amount of money. Uh, well, I was going to say, yeah. you know, and when you're a business, obviously you're looking at overhead constantly. Mm-hmm. That's a big bill. Mm-hmm. To, Especially to right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and yeah. and one of those things that's applicable both in commercial and residential is one of the, one of the advantages of solar is it removes a variable from your life, in the sense that. Uh, you don't care about utility rate inflation. So if ninety percent, mm-hmm. if ninety percent of the electricity you use is being generated off your roof, then it doesn't matter when Delmarva Power announces a fifteen percent rate increase in one year, as happened last year, or, sure. or or these sort of things, because what you're actually paying the utility is probably, you know, sixty seventy dollars a year, and so if that goes up. Ten percent. Yeah, it's, it's a, not a big deal. Yeah, a big um, big percentage of a small number right. is still a small and, number. And mm-hmm. both from the business perspective of having the ability to remove a, take a variable off the table, even if it is relatively small to the overall cost of operating a business, it's still a, a real benefit. Yeah, uh, because you can plan for it. Uh, you know, here in our residential service, our residential customers, because obviously, you know, Southern Delaware has become one of the top what five top retirement destinations in the United States. You know, people are moving from a position of of having regular employment income to fixed income positions, and mm. whether or not that fixed income is low or high, again, the idea of not having to worry about whether or not your electric bill is going to go up thirty, forty, fifty dollars a month on average, and just have that taken care of sure. uh, is really a terrific benefit, uh, if for no other reason than than peace of mind. Yeah. No, I mean it's. You know, and again, I think that you know, typically people when they think solar, they think residential. You know, I, mm-hmm. I never really thought of it from a, a, a commercial standpoint, mm-hmm. but, but that it makes sense. And obviously, from you know, helping you know, you know to your point, you know, now costs are so high. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can pick up savings anywhere, but on the residential side, I mean, yeah, I mean that's a whole nother. You know, to your point on the fixed income, you know, a lot of people they do come down here, and that's one of the reasons why Delaware is such a big destination outside of yeah, we have beaches and laid back lifestyle. 
but it's our our taxes and you know hey we're going on a fixed income now we're retiring and we need to try to plan that out and you know a two hundred dollar bill or a three hundred dollar a month bill if you can get that to as close to zero mm-hmm. you know it's great um, you know we we talk about uh, what irrigation wells a lot you know because we're trying right. to you know a, a, pay back there yeah we're trying to again fix you know with fixed income you know in the hot months when you're watering your lawn. And you're hooked up to you know public water. You can have a five hundred dollar a month bill. Well, it's a one time fee of whatever it is, four thousand dollars roughly. And you can just water your bill however you want. Mm-hmm. So you know if you know you're running your electric, you don't have to be thinking of the meter running of oh no or you know we're yeah. doing lots of cooking or whatever it might be. You know, yeah, you know. absolutely. Well, not to mention the fact that what with the advent of something, uh, you know, the prominence or coming prominence of electric vehicles, the other notion yeah. is that instead of not just not having to worry about the electric bill on your house, but the fuel bill for your car, where if you put in a car charger to, in your garage and you have the solar capacity for it, you're charging, your, you're, you're paying for your own transportation. Uh, in fact, I just spoke with a customer of, our, of mine uh, in the Walden community, out, out Route 24, mm-hmm. uh, who owns a Tesla. And he, he calculated that he has driven his Tesla 30,000 miles on the, the electricity provided by his solar on his house. Mm. So this becomes sort of a, a, a an expanding loop of savings and of financial benefit to the home the homeowner who has solar. Yeah, well, I mean, in gas prices do the math. You know, mm-hmm. take your thirty thousand exactly. miles, and what does that equate to? And, and yeah, you know, you're not, you know, going to take that savings and buy a mansion with it. But mm-hmm. you know, hey, that's real money that, that's in your yeah. pocket to go on vacation or do whatever you want, especially on the fixed income. It's like, hey, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. I tell my customers, you're most rooting for the rates to go up once you go solar, right? So yeah. every kilowatt hour you don't purchase from the utility, as that rate's going up, it's more money that stays in your pocket. Sure. Money that's already taxed. Right? Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so shielding from inflation is, is mm-hmm. a message that we really try to get out there. Do you guys do, and I've, I have a buddy who's who can, like, geek out on, like, tech stuff and like we get mm-hmm. into we, we go down rabbit holes on like hey you know using the uh harbor freight solar panels on your shed and you know whatever mm-hmm. and we get into like storage you know mm-hmm. energy oh, yeah. storage do you guys offer or, or what's kind of the take on and i hear this a, a very far and few between i'm just pure, personally curious about storage for for dark time yeah you know, at, mm-hmm. at night. I, I can get into that um so we're lucky in delaware to have what's called net metering all mm-hmm. that means is if you don't need the electricity right away, it will go back through a specialty meter to the grid locally for someone else to use. Okay. When that happens, utility gives you a dollar for dollar credit. You okay. Can, you can use that credit when you need it. Most people use it on the next month's billing cycle, right? Um, when you use or when you add a battery, yes, you can store that excess electricity on your own. But since we have that relationship with the utility, there's no real financial benefit mm, for the battery. Makes sense. Um, there's some states that don't have net metering or the exchange is different, so it's not true dollar for dollar. Or there's some states that have certain times of the day where it makes sense to use your storage to offset like some peak rates or charges mm-hmm. that the mm-hmm. utility does. California is one. Um, so is a battery in Delaware a uh, financial decision especially when people see the price of these batteries well, i was gonna say it's not cheap twice yeah um, it's yeah. it's really just for that peace of mind yeah, yeah. emergency backup we get to well, and, and how long would it, how long i mean obviously it depends on how many batteries you have but like mm-hmm. but a but a normal person would probably i mean my my batteries for my golf cart were a thousand bucks so i mean how long you know for, for what a normal person would buy like what would that even last you yeah it depends couple, on the size of the battery and your usage um, yeah. to start we usually recommend a 10 kw which can get you about 24 hours okay um, so yeah. So it's, you, it, is the payoff really worth? Yeah, it? I mean the good news is the battery the battery options are scalable, so you can you can start with, and in some cases you can almost you know add on Stack over time, <laughs> uh, but you can start with sort of an emergency backup situation where specific circuits within your home are, t- are, are tied into the battery. Mm, okay. so, so let's say we had a, a, an extended blackout period, uh, and the thing you care about most is being able to charge devices 
know what the news is telling you about what's going on in the world and not have the food in your refrigerator spoil mm-hmm. and maybe run your microwave so you can heat stuff up. Yeah. Um, you can specific, you can buy a battery system such that you're, you're specifically targeting a few circuits and doing just that. You can ultimately go to the point where you could do what's known as taking your home off grid, which we would never recommend. Sure. But yeah. you could go into a situation where the battery capacity is such that it handles 100% of your need 24 hours a day. Uh, fortunately, the the much of the technology that we're using for installing solar in our in in our customers uh, homes and businesses today are scalable in the sense that they've already been pre-designed to accommodate batteries so even if you chose not to do batteries today but maybe say three or four years down the road prices come down a bit sure. uh, and you decide yeah I think I do want to make that that leap we've already set up the system such that you can easily just it's plug and play oh, at that's that cool. point uh, similar with electric ve- vehicle chargers uh, one of the com- manufacturers of we work with uh, that set up the device called an inverter which is part of the core elements of a solar system uh, also manufacture electric vehicle chargers so we can have those pl- literally plugged into the same system so you're and that 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 impacts monitoring for the systems you can you know you can really control how your home works because what solar is moving into uh, these days is is thinking about your home as a smart house, uh, but now also smart in terms of energy management. And it's getting to the point where you can literally see, you know, what room in your house is using more power than others and that sort of thing. And yeah. it really allows you to more effectively manage if you want to become that engaged in your home. Yeah. Uh, the good news is the systems are fully automated. So if you decide not to be that engaged, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to think about it at all. It just does what it does. Yeah, I've noticed there's a there's a company. I'm sure they're on the infancy, and it's it's super expensive. But I kind of can geek out on stuff also, and it's a, a new circuit breaker box, and it, mm-hmm. it does it allows yeah, there's you a lot of products out there. Yeah, you can like yeah. monitor each breaker and like mm-hmm. what the you know what yeah. your draw is, and so you can be like, oh, the daughter's you know leaving her lights on, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really cool. Um, again. You know, for the total savings of, of how much for the, the, the overall cost on it. And unless yeah. it's just like, hey, I'm bored and I just want to, you know, this is something I want to do. Cool, go for it. But until the costs come down. Yeah. But yeah. it is neat. But I think that majority of people, they wake up in the morning, they turn their lights on, they turn them off and they leave the room. And, and, and they're just more so looking at every month when that bill comes in. Mm-hmm. Um does this affect my life or does it not? And if it does, is there a solution to alleviate some of that or help in the fixed income aspect? Exactly. And I think that's where solar does come in. The batteries are cool, and I never thought of it from – it's almost like a short-term generator type mm-hmm. of thing. It does the same thing. You know, it's yeah. not, it doesn't have the, the fuel option of – you know. Well, I guess it kind of does because in, the, in the, the next day it would charge – it doesn't go offline like if the power's out. Yeah, so I guess. the battery allows the system to work without the grid. Now, as soon as that inverter that Charles was talking about senses that there's grid failure, someone hits a telephone pole up the road, uh-huh. by code, your your solar system has to shut off. Oh, okay. So so it um, wouldn't continue to charge if like – Correct. In like a Hurricane Sandy type of s- scenario. Unless we add the battery. So – Yeah. The, that battery is charged to a certain extent when that doesn't sense the grid – so your home switches over using the battery, and then the solar is going to recharge that battery. Okay, so so the solar and battery will work independently if the grid goes down. So you would have power for the at nighttime, and then Correct. the next day yeah. the solar would recharge the recharge battery. and the battery. Okay, yeah. so I mean, it gives you some type of you know security keeping your yeah. you know food you know yeah, exactly. freezers and all of that going. So not a horrible idea. I mean, uh, so the reason I, I bring that up is, you know, I have a lot of clients. I do obviously a lot of building and a lot of that with Shell Brothers and especially people from up north. And I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm from outside of Philadelphia. Lots of people had, had generators, you know, oh, yeah. above line, uh, uh, above, you know, overhead lines and old trees, old homes, snow, ice, and that, you know, and then next thing you know, you're without power. So people always ask about, you know, hey, can we get uh, a generator installed? Mm -hmm. And, you know, most builders, including Shell, they don't offer it, but hey, you can always do it afterwards. But this is an option that is kind of in between stopgap. You get, the thing about the generator is you don't ever get the benefit unless it happens to turn on. Whereas this, you kind of get that, that 
best of both, best of both worlds type yeah. of scenario. I were, uh, given that I work uh, primarily with new construction, many of my customers are in fact relocating to this area from the Philadelphia to the Philadelphia, New York corridor in yeah. particular, uh, also the greater Washington, D.C. area, both areas in which I've lived. And I know a stiff wind sometimes can take your power out yeah. in two or three days. Absolutely. Um, what I tell my customers and have for the last decade is that I moved I moved down here to Lewis in uh, 2002. So I've been here 22 years uh, in that time. And I live in a community that is that as you real estate professionals would say is mature, which means I have uh, above ground <laughs> power yeah. supply and dying pine trees. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is that over that 22 years, I've not experienced a power out of, outage of greater than six hours in length ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I counsel my customers to do is take a wait and see approach, build the technology into your solar installation that allows you to easily upgrade later, sure. but then have a lived experience of a year or two before that occurs. Plus, I also think that, the, and, and certainly trends have been that battery prices are trending downward, albeit not as fast as we'd like, yeah. uh, but they are trending downward, not much like solar did itself. Um, uh, I, I, I have a pop quiz for you, which is, uh, and especially since you're, you mentioned you're a, bit, a little geeky yeah. where, where technology yeah. is concerned. Kind of warm up here. How, lo right. how old or how long has, has modern solar energy re uh, generation existed? This, uh, the essential uh, system like you see on somebody's house today. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here. I'm going to say 2010? 1954. I was off. Yeah. Bell Laboratories. <laughs> By a couple of years. Yeah. Years. Bell Laboratories <laughs> created the first functioning solar electric generation system with a, with a solar panel collector that, and an inverter scenario, just like we're installing in people's homes today, 70 years ago. Wow. And so, you know, for 50 of those 70 years, the te technology was, was complicated. It was extremely expensive and really only used in situations where you didn't have any other choices, you know, of, of, solar, uh, you know, of satellites and space stations. For yeah, example, yeah. Uh, but the reality is, is the technology we're using today, although some people think of it as being very new, is in fact not new. It's a very tried and true, you know, decades worth of proof that this does what it does and does it effectively. And these days, relative to the cost of electricity, the cost of installing solar is really neutral. In fact, I've just read an article recently in the New York Times that for the first time ever, solar has now become less expensive in terms of power generation than coal or natural gas. Mm. So it's a great way of making a long-term investment that you can really trust and have faith in. Yeah. Uh, batteries are still younger than that in terms of, of sure. their 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 mm -hmm. effective lifespan. And so, you know, give it a year or two and I think there will that's when we're going to see a lot more people adopting batteries because they want to have that extra level of security in their homes. Yeah. So and, I yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to say and there are some cool products coming out that you don't necessarily need a battery to benefit from the electricity from your system. Hmm. Um, so Enphase has what's called a sunlight backup option. Okay. So mm -hmm. Scenario again, grid failure, someone hits a telephone pole, you can, as long as the sun is shining, benefit from a couple circuits working in your home. So you can pick for like 120 uh, volt outlets, kitchen, bedroom, router, something like that, um, that you can get electricity, you know, in, in these kind of emergency situations. Sure. Also, Fronius is coming out with their new new gen um, inverters that are going to have an actual outlet on the inverter so you can plug and charge a cell phone. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make massive expense, you know, for these batteries to benefit if you're just looking to charge a cell phone or, yeah. or yeah. run yeah. A, a router. I, I think that, um, I mean, I, I think all of us, the general client out there that's you know buying a home or building a home whatever it might be and you know hey the question comes up about solar i think everyone has interest in it but i think it's it's uh it's still like a little bit confusing for some reason mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and so they just go like i don't know i'll just think about it later yeah. so as part of the reason why um you know i was like i think this would be really great content for you guys to yeah. come on to kind of discuss um what the what the process is because uh, people get you know scared. I, I have cl clients that contact me and they're like I've never built a home before and they're kind of a little mm -hmm. bit nervous and you know I, I don't know and obviously we want your help but you know maybe we should just buy a resale. I'm like it is it's 
it's crazy how easy it is to build a house. Yeah. It, it's, it is not the process how it was in the 60s, 70s, hire an architect and, you know, mm-hmm. go out there and do soil samples and all this stuff. The builder's taking care of all of that ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You just go out and pick out, like, do you like red or blue? Yeah. Basically, yeah. what shape do I like? And then sign the paper and, you know, put down your deposit and then you move into the house, you know, a couple months later. And it's really, it's, it's more fun than it is yeah. stressful and difficult. And I think it kind of comes down a little bit with you guys also of, you know, they're like, oh, well, what is involved with, you know, tying in, or, you know, and, and there's some rebates and, you know, just, right. just, you know, and so they just go, oh, I'll just address it. I'm dealing with everything else in the build also. Mm-hmm. So I think that it's important for people to kind of hear from you guys, like, what does the process look like? Like during, we'll, we'll say the build side first, and then we'll talk about on the residential sure. add on. But like, what does that process look like? If they were to sign a contract with Shell Brothers mm-hmm. and, you know, solar comes up. Yeah. Well, the beauty of it is, is that the process is, in fact, incredibly simple, um, and as is solar, really, when you think about it. Uh, it's, I, always, I always joke that it's a one-trick pony. It does one thing. It makes electricity. That's all it does. And it's fully automated, so it, you don't even have to ma- help it make electricity. It takes care of it by itself. Uh, solar systems really only have two primary components, one of which we've alluded to, which are the inverters. Uh, you have panels that you see on the roof. They collect UV radiation. They generate what is direct current or DC power. Uh, your home operates with AC power, and so you have to convert that. And so there's a device called an inverter that does that conversion from DC to AC. Uh, we've referenced two manufacturers in our conversation already, Fronius and Enphase. There are a number of other manufacturers out there as well. But at the end of the day, that's really what the, the device is doing. So, so, so all- for people out there, it's the same thing as when you're in your car and you plug into that little outlet, uh-huh. your car exactly. has an inverter that converts to DC to AC. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, mm-hmm. That's exactly what's occurring only on your roof and throughout your and house. Bigger, big, and bigger, higher bigger. voltage. Yeah. Right. Um, as far as getting solar installed in your home, in new construction, it's terrific because we do it while the home is under construction. We do the installation before drywall and insulation is installed in a new construction home. So all of the conduit and the few things that people might not think of as being as attractive on a house are completely buried inside the walls. So it makes for a, a, a more attractive installation. Uh, as far as the incentives, there's there's really two primary incentives here in Delaware. There is a 30% federal tax credit. That's available nationwide, of course, because it's an, a, a federal program. And that would be on the following year's tax return? Correct. Okay. So let's say we had a system that was $21,000. We would take 30% of that or $7,000 and you would enjoy that as a tax credit which is, and credits, by the way, come off of what your obligation to the federal government is, not what your income is. It's not a write-off. So it's not a write-off. It's an actual credit. So, so if, if I, you owed $7,000, right. you would owe $0. Exactly okay. right. Uh, the other incentive is a grant that is mandated by the state, managed by the individual utilities. Uh, depending on your utility, the value of that grant can can vary, but it's typically going to be somewhere between 10 and 25% of the cost of your system. And that's a cash grant, and it's going to pay directly to you. Now, it is post-settlement or post-installation, so you are going to still pay for the solar, but you're going to get that money back to you. And again, that's in the form of a cash payback, uh, which is really terrific. After closing, like a couple months later? or uh, is it- A year and a half. So you get, they, get, oh, so yeah. they, they get a check. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hopefully around Christmas. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but once it's installed, uh, it is a system that is designed to last 30 years. There are warranties on your system that extend up to 25 years. So really, your life, your, your downstream costs with solar are very small, uh, anticipated. You don't have to clean the panels because we get enough rain over the course of the year. They're self-cleaning. Uh, because there's no moving parts in the system, there's no regularly scheduled maintenance. So for example uh, – Take, for example, a, a Generac-style generator. Once a year, you have to have a, essentially an inspection tune-up-ish sort sure. of thing happen, which means once a year, you have to hire an electrician to come out to your home and give them a couple of hundred dollars for the pleasure of them Cause flipping switches. It's, it's an f- engine. Switches. Right. It's like, an actual engine. And, and God up. forbid when you need right. it and you didn't have it tuned up and it won't exactly. start or kick up. And, and know, it's okay. an engine that's idle sure. most of the time. Yeah. Uh, Solar doesn't have that. There are no moving parts, so there's sure. no regular maintenance, so there's no cost associated. Mm. You know, there's no service plan, for example. Many th- many appliances and objects in our homes we buy, we also spend money for a service plan. Uh, as installers of solar, we wish we could charge you a, sol- a service plan, but yeah. there's nothing to service. Yeah. Uh, and so the, that, uh, that perception that solar is sort of a difficult challenge is really, you know – 
not the case anymore. It's no more difficult than hiring a reputable installer of solar for your home. Uh, it's an easy process. It usually takes 12 to 16 weeks in existing homes. Uh, the actual installation only takes a day. Most of the rest of that's paperwork. And we handle all the paperwork for you. So there's nothing for you to do. You just sit there and get free electricity. So and on the on the new construction side, so they would sign a contract with the builder. And then mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming there's a, at some point a, a future appointment for a consultation mm-hmm. with exactly. you guys. And then – We'll use the the number $20,000. So then they write you guys a check for $20,000, or how does it work from their financial standpoint? Depending on the builder and depending on how you're building your home. So if you're building your home yourself, you already own the land, et cetera, you may opt to just cut us the check and have for the solar, or you can run it through your builder if you're using using building financing, for example. Uh, You can fold that into the price of the home. When you're working with a contract builder such as Shell Brothers, uh, that is that upgrade of your home, including solar, is treated the same as any other upgrade in the selections process. For so, building. like countertops, so same countertops, is, mm. uh, hardscaping, um, uh, you know, anything like that that you want to include into your home at the time of construction. So that cost gets folded into the purchase price and therefore mm. in potentially into your financing uh, or any of those sort of options depending on how you're financing your project. And even if you finance it, you still get the, the yes, tax you credit, you still $7,000 $7, off Correct. your obligation plus that 10 to 25 percent Correct. check that will eventually yes, come to you. absolutely. Hmm. This is one of the reasons why it's so attractive for new new construction customers to, to do the solar while the build is happening. We give a more attractive installation. But because you can fold those prices into a large, the larger cost, it can make it make cash flow issues significantly more convenient. And and be, if it, if it's done during you know the typical timeline of the new construction side, they're not having to worry about calling for permitting, even though you're like a, a third party installer <laughs> or scheduling it or anything like that. You guys are. Yeah, you Shell is contacting or you're contacting mm-hmm. contacting Shell or whatever it is and coordinating all. They're just going yeah. about eating dinner and doing like exactly. life is normal. We, we take care they, of all yeah. of it. They show up. Right. Solar's on the house. In the same way that your builder is going to pull all of your permits for construction, they're going to take care of all of the the zoning issues. They do all the you know they're they're doing the soil samples. They're yep. taking care of everything for you, where you don't have to lift a finger after you decide what home you want and what features that home has. Solar is the same, exactly the same. So they talk process. to you. They all they have to do is say yes. Exactly. And then they show Check up and, and it's there. Right. Yeah. And never have to worry about an electric yeah. bill. Yeah. Yeah. So what does never have to worry about an electric bill like look like? Because they still charge like a little bit yeah. of, like a, of a yeah. service I fee or whatever. Sure. That a bit. Um, and you know, unlike what Charles does is estimates. Um, sure. An annual usage for the home. That's based on square footage, some lifestyle questions he asks, a lot of data that we've collected over the years of home a placement. Shell home. Mm-hmm. Like roof line placement. Yeah, roof and all line, that. Yeah. Um, orientation, things yeah. like that. But um, So, what I do is analyze your electric bill first. So, I'll look at the bill itself has a usage bar graph mm-hmm. that will show exactly how many kilowatt hours of electricity that that meter used that month. Um, now, per guidelines from the utility, we have to look at the past 24 months, take an average. That allows us um, to determine what size system we can get approved to install in the home. Okay. Um, with that being said, we can most mostly offset our goal, which is around 90, 100% of their usage. Um, now, when looking at their bill... Yes, there are some fixed charges. Most are based on usage, though. So uh, per utility, DC, DEC actually just doubled their customer charge um, to $28. That's fixed. Delmarva Power, they have a $16 fixed charge. But everything else is usage-based. So if the system is producing the kilowatt hours um, that the home can use, opposed to purchasing them from the utility, you're really not buying or using any kilowatt hours from the utility. Okay. So, and, and DC, uh, Delaware Co-op, mm-hmm. right? And what was that? Delmarva Power is the other one. Oh, and how much was the Delaware Co-op? $28 for the customer okay, charge. 20, oh yeah, because yeah, I remember, I thought it was 14 was like that. It was. It was, was that it was, number? Yeah. It was. Yeah, so they doubled that. To, yeah. Um, they're, a, a they raised their, their fixed charges on us, not their uh, yeah. kilowatt hour 
rates. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're doing it after the fact, you're getting um, the system specifically not designed to meet your need. Yeah. Um, you know, I always tell people solar is a great investment up to the panel you don't need. So we, we don't want to put more than you mm -hmm. need unless you're thinking about doing some lifestyle things like hot tubs and yeah, yeah, cars, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, most of our customers will not have a, a significant bill ever after going solar. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, as I was telling you when we were talking earlier, I have um, solar on my house. Mm -hmm. You know, it was on my home. I bought a resale home. It was on it already with a different manufacturer. It is a leased product, um, you know, and, and I think there's always questions and concerns when people buy a home and on our seller's disclosure, there's solar and it says owned or leased. Mm -hmm. And obviously we check that off. So you guys do purchase only. So anyone Correct. that, that were to purchase, you know, get solar with you, they're going to be checking off that, that purchase box, which makes the transition a whole lot easier. I mean, a, a whole lot easier. I mean, mine was my, the, the, the purchase or the seller that I purchased from was, I mean, in the rears and it was, it was a, a mess, yeah. but that's because it was a lease and I had to assume the lease and I had to agree to the terms and they had to like make it, you know, he had to pay them back and all, you know, all this stuff. So it makes life a little bit, um, dirtier when you're dealing with a lease the, as far as on the transaction side. So it's nice to be able to transfer over a home that has free power. Mm -hmm. That's free and clear. There's no kind of, you know, yeah, I like to contract to, to like muck, the, muck up the waters. Appliance in your home. Yeah. Right. You true. Know, like a hot water heater. Or Absolutely. It's yeah. just an energy it's generating right. appliance. Yeah. When you, yeah, when you own solar, it. when you own solar on your home, you own it, which yeah. means it's part of the house. When a home is sold that has solar, it automatically transfers over. There's no, pr there's no license for it as sure. it were. Um, so that there is no, the, the, there's no excess uh, issues in terms of, of paperwork having to be signed at settlement. There's no surprises. Mm -hmm. um, there is a little bit of transfer that occurs post settlement because you you're going to assume the warranties of that system on your roof. Uh, so you're going to want to know who the install, the original installer was and reach out to them and make sure they know that you now own the home. Okay. But beyond that, that's really more due diligence, though. It's not uh, an encumbrance to selling selling or yeah. purchasing the home. Or could be, you know, something that you're, that the new buyers are like, do I really want to take on this yeah. this additional lease? You know, they say that they have that for security mm -hmm. systems and everything else. Mm -hmm. But it's not just, hey, this is a benefit. It's like it makes people pause for a second. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, oh, this is cool. Awesome. It has solar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's really cool. It's owned. So, Fortunately, in our marketplace, if you're looking at a home that has solar and that home is less than, say, six years old, the likelihood is that it's not a lease system. The likelihood is it's, it is owned by the homeowner. Cool. Yeah. Well, and and to the point, and we talked about this briefly. I mean, homes. You know, I, I think code was was it last code change was twenty twenty or somewhere around there. Um, I mean, homes are being built so much more energy efficient than we mm -hmm. were if we were to look at a home that Definitely. was built in the nineteen eighties or whatever. Oh yeah. So more blown in insulation, two by six construction, all the things that help make these homes. You know use less energy now mm -hmm. we throw solar on it and that's why you're able to get it down to this you know fourteen dollar bill you know which Absolutely. is just more of a service charge my home was actually built in i think 2005 national builder and i was just telling you i just paid my i have solar and i just paid a bill for four hundred dollars now yeah. i have two girls that use a whole lot of electric but um you know and we have electric water heater and stuff like that yeah. and they take crazy long showers but with that being said, part of it is probably I don't have the best solar system because it is older and probably maybe not engineered as one of the better systems to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and also I have a home that's not you know crazy energy efficient. Mm -hmm. So you know it's just kind of you know the nature of the beast. But you guys do do the retrofit stuff and install it on the of houses. Course, yeah. So I can only imagine what my four hundred dollar bill would be if I if I didn't <laughs> well, if I didn't have it. I can I can tell pretty quick by looking at an electric bill if that home is efficient or not. You know, because you'll, you'll see massive spikes um, in the winter yeah. but, um, from the electric heat. And then, you know, the spikes in the summer as well from HVAC. But. So from the from the um, retrofit or whatever you guys call it, when someone already has a house, and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. thinking about adding solar now to it. Obviously, if it was, you know, a shell house that was built a couple of years ago, it's all besides the install, but the the product is probably going to be similar to the same product they would have had if they added it exactly. when it was yeah. built. But hey, the house was built in two thousand. 
So you're going to go through and what is the process? What should they um, start gathering to be prepared for the initial consultation? I'm sure there's information that you're going to want to review to make mm -hmm. proper recommendations. Yeah, um, good question. So first we look at the bill. Now, again, the utility has a bit of say in this, right? They're going to make sure that um, it's warranted. Uh, again, we do the calculation through them. We can see exactly how much we can add for them. Now, we talked about inverters a bit. Um, without getting too overly complicated, you have a, a strong system. So there's panels that are linked together. And then you have uh, what's called a microinverter system, where each panel has its own little inverter. Hmm, okay. Now, the strong system is a little bit more complicated and what we can add because that inverter can only handle so much. Sure. Uh, um, if we're doing, you know, too much for it to handle, we might have to replace that inverter, which can get a little pricey. So we want to see how much we can add to that system, whether it's four panels or six panels. Um, the microinverter is one of the pro, pro, um, you know, columns is it's uh, very easy to add to. So we can because they all have their own two, inverters. four, six, yeah. eight, um, kind of plug and in. play. Yeah. So we've really moved um, to end phase and their micro inverters oh, cool. for our yeah. new construction. Um, mostly to that to that yeah. fact. Yeah. I mean, the the beauty of it, and as as Griff said at the beginning of his 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 comment, was from the standpoint of the homeowner, if you're interested in getting solar. The, the amount of homework you have to do to be prepared to get that quote is exists is to the extent of give us your most recent electric bill. Mm -hmm. your, that, that's all we need to get a, a reasonable estimate together for a customer. And that's going to, and that estimate will generally include from us or any other reputable installer of solar is going to show you the size of the system, how much electricity it's going to produce, what offset that's going to represent to you, i.e. how much money are you going to save, sure. the costs, the incentives, the warranties, et cetera. So you should be presented with a package of information that really educates you to the point where you can make a, a meaningful decision on that. Uh, we really just facilitate that process. But from the homeowner's perspective, the beauty of all of this is is from the day you decide, you, know, you you pick up a phone or send an email to us and say, hey, I'm interested in this, to the day that we f ultimately turn the system on, uh, you, you as a homeowner really have little to nothing to have to worry about or take care of in that process. We take care of all of it. Yeah, and I think that that's a lot of questions that I've heard from clients that, you know, maybe they're looking to buy a resale house and, you know, mm -hmm. you know thinking about, especially, I, I think it's because people think our sky's bigger here and we have more sun. I think it's because we're so <laughs> flat, you know, you come from like, you know, parts of New York and there's rolling hills mm -hmm. with tall trees and there, whatever. So, hey, you know, should we're I... at the beach. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're at the beach here. Yeah. So like, hey, should we be, be considering solar? And it's, well, how much roof space do we have in which direction and all this? And I'm like... Mm -hmm. That is not part of your something that you should be have to worry about. Absolutely. Um, so just call the pros to let them do that. But I think that that is part of you know if the conversation ever came up with mm -hmm. me, they move in and they're starting to think about it. Maybe that's what's stalling them. And I think it's important mm -hmm. for people to to know just. You just have to have a bill and make a phone call. And, exactly. and most of the bills are online, so it's on your phone. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so it's yeah. that simple. Shoot me your bill, and we'll get you something back within now, a day or so. Yeah. Now, as a homeowner, the one thing you may want to think about before you call us is where the panels are going to go. Yeah. And that's a really easy answer or a easy process to figure out, which is you open up uh, an online map tool that has ha that shows you the compass p directions that your home faces. Mm -hmm. Look at what side of your home faces towards south. So that's anything from due east to due west. Those are the sides of the home that you're going to be able to put solar panels on. So if you're the kind of person who maybe maybe feels like I don't want them on the front of my house, well, take a look at Google Earth. It's going to show you whether or not the front of your house faces towards south. If the answer is no, it doesn't face south, then you don't have to worry about solar panels in the front of your house. They're all going to go on the back anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the one thing a homeowner might want to do before making picking up a phone and making that phone call about solar. But even if they don't want to do that, we're going to let them know right away because the we're there. They will know absolutely everything ahead of time before an installation occurs yeah. because that's what a reputable business, any reputable business, does. And Anybody, to all the iPhone users out there, your compass. 
right on your phone. Exactly. So you don't have to pull up a map exactly. or, and try don't to try to, to read, just look at it. You know, lay it flat and see which way south is and, and go there from there. Go. Now, in regards to the the front and rear and cosmetic aspects, I'm just just curious. I you know I, I keep kind of keep my thumb on this a little mm-hmm. bit. You probably maybe you know what I'm going to ask the the shingle, uh, yeah. you know, you know, solar that's you know been talked about. I'm sure it's super expensive now, but you know, kind of what's mm-hmm. what's word on on that? Something that looks more integrated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at a traditional solar panel closely, you'll see uh, it has individual cells in it. There's about 60 cells in a regular solar panel. You can take these cells and put them into anything you want. Really. You can, pave streets with them, weave them in your clothing if you like. Um, Tesla tried to um, put them in translucent roof tiles, and it's mainly for aesthetic reasons, but like like you alluded to, is the cost is high. Yeah. Yeah, right? So most people look at this as a financial decision, and they want that payback as quick as possible. They want to sure. save yeah. on that electricity bill as quick as possible. Solar yeah. shingles, um, one, uh, are, well, they are significantly more expensive. Uh, so really, they become an option when um, home building aesthetics become a, a really a chief concern. So, for example, an architecturally significant building, a historically significant building, mm. something okay. along those lines where it's more than just what does my house look pretty, but this house has you yeah. know has some sort of significant value to the to the community to the culture. That's the kind of place where something like a solar shingle really begins to make sense. For most of us, especially if we can put them on the back of our house, the difference in cost, it's going to be about three times more expensive to use the mm-hmm. shingle. Plus maintenance is always a concern because if I have a hole in my roof when I don't have solar, I hire a roofer and I pay them whatever roofer or the roofer is going to cost to come out. If I have solar shingles on that roof, I now have to hire a master electrician to repair my roof. And so you can see downstream costs can potentially be significantly higher. Sure. And it's the reason why, even though this technology has been available in our marketplace for a couple of years, we really – at Clean Energy USA at least, we really shy away from recommending them uh, because it's a, it's a really niche product. And again, mm-hmm. uh, since par- the, the you know part of having solar is the value of having solar in terms of money saved, return on investment, et cetera. Solar shingles are not going to fit well into that equation, at least not at this time. Probably like solar in the 80s or 90s. Exactly you know, Just right. way too expensive, yeah. not enough people doing it, not enough big companies yeah, that really dove like into it to, to get yeah. the get the cost down. And, you know, then eventually, you know, mm-hmm. they did. And so maybe in, you know, five or ten years and mm-hmm. it's more mass produced and, you know, hey, that'd be great. Yeah. But in the meantime, you know, we have, have some solid options. And, and look, I, I have some clients that are like, I'm building this beautiful home. There's no way I'm putting solar on the front. Mm-hmm. And I have other ones that are like, I don't really care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, and, I'm, I'm good. I'm just trying to come yeah. down here, relax, and keep my costs down as low yeah. as possible. And if I can... Sounds good to me. Yeah, do some upfront costs. So out of that, you know, for average numbers, out of that 20,000, just for to like clarify for people that are watching this, what would you say the average numbers you see that people are getting back and so that what their final out-of-pocket number tends to be on average? Um, that It's a great question. Uh, it's not as easy to answer as you might think because okay. there are variables involved. As I mentioned earlier in our conversation, uh, depending on your utility, Mm. You may you, you, the amount of the state grant being offered is going to be different, and in fact, if you happen to live in an incorporated township where there's a board of public works providing you your electricity, there probably okay. isn't a grant available at all. So one of the, the, the I'm I'm not being purposefully evasive here, no, 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 but that's, that's a concern. A concern. Yeah. Typically speaking, most homeowners can su- expect fifty to seventy percent of the cost being offset through incentives. Okay. Uh, so a uh, since we've been using twenty thousand dollars as our sort of or twenty one thousand dollars as our bandied figure, your your net cost is probably going to be about nine thousand dollars, and that's going to typically pay for itself in seven to nine years. Again, depending on your utility uh, and because what your utility rates. For sure. example, boards of public works don't have the don't have a grant available, but they have the most expensive electricity right. in the state. So mm-hmm. your your benefit there sure, is because that your you're, actual you're, you're savings, not paying for right, all of that. Your out of pocket yeah. savings is is significantly greater. So there there are some variables there. Uh, there's also interestingly enough some financing available from the state. Uh, you can as if you are a resident of the state of Delaware and a homeowner, you can pr- you can borrow up to seventy percent of the cost of the system. And this is a direct state funding program. It's not going. Mm. It's not a guaranteed loan going through a third party institution like an F, like an FHA loan is. Uh, it's a, it's a direct state to resident loan. 
Uh, and again, when you think of a 30 percent federal tax credit and a 70 percent loan, you can actually do this for, for effectively speaking, zero out-of-pocket cost. Uh, those term and the terms of those are really attractive. They can you can actually schedule those up to ten years, and oh, wow. they have an interest rate under four percent, which in today's world is no, that's, is yeah. basically free money. Yep. Uh, so for Delaware residents, it's an even easier prospect of having solar on their home and having it right away. And obviously, that is something that they don't need to go out and start digging around online to try to find no. out. You can help we'll us take care of we'll them. Set the them up. Right. for them. Yeah. And in fact, one of the advantages of working with uh, with Clean Energy USA is we're actually a preferred vendor with the state. So we, we actually can directly initiate the application process for that financing with the state. Uh, not, all, not all solar installers can do that. Mm, that's good. Well, it kind of shows the reputation mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. of, of what you guys are doing here. I took advantage of this loan for my home. So process was easy. Um, what I really liked about it, there's no origination fees. So oh, cool. as someone presenting this to a customer, it's not like I have to show a higher price for a loan option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There's also no prepay penalty. So, so they, of, to, they can just pay it off yeah. sooner if they yeah. want to. A lot of customers are just like, okay, well, my daughter's getting married. I need some cash. Um, I'm going to grab this loan and, and pay it off when I get my tax return or something like that. It, yeah. hmm. I pay mine off in three years um, for, You know, because I have three kids. <laughs> I can do it right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah. But um, we used you know, two years of tax returns, put a little bit towards it, and Cool. Off. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's definitely one of those things. And, and again, I think the, you know, and, and you guys probably know more because you, you know, talk to probably more homeowners than I do. And I, I talk to a decent amount. I think a lot of people, it's more just the, the potential confusion of, I just don't know where to start. I don't know how mm -hmm. to do it. And I, I do know that part of, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think part of Shell's process, and obviously they talk to Guardian, who does all the low voltage and audio and security mm -hmm. and all that. You guys are one of those, the vendors also that they will speak to? That is correct, yeah. yes. Um, you know, and then you know they can decide whether to check the box or not. I think it's pretty cool that it gets kind of rolled into mm -hmm. um, to the, not even the bill. I, I, don't, I don't even care about the bill as much, but from, especially because the vast majority of people don't live in the area, they don't know who to call. They don't know how to get permitting. They don't know what and how. And, you know, okay, do I have to talk to the field supervisor to, so you guys can get access to install or who kind of – so it's nice for them that it's just kind of, yeah, we want to do it, and then show up and get your keys, and yeah. it's there. You guys work with Shell to, to you know, exactly. have the scheduling done and the install mm -hmm. done, and, you know, and probably the field supervisor is also checking to make sure that things are, you know – Put where they're supposed to yeah. be put. They don't have to worry about having like a, a third party vendor come in during the build process and shell being angry or the builder being angry yeah. or whatever. It's just integrated. One of the things that I think Shell Brothers really excels at in the in the experience of that journey of building a home for the customer is the fact that so many of those options are absolutely seamless. Yeah, and solar is definitely part of that. Yep. we're we we literally know what what the schedule of a project is uh, when we're talking to the customers we can tell them exactly when the installation is going to occur as part of the larger build process we have direct connections with the construction managers with the with the cons the community managers etc are because we install in any given year probably a hundred systems on shell home specific uh, our trucks are literally in those communities every single day yeah. uh, and so that process becomes no more difficult than deciding which 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 suite of appliances you want in the kitchen? Sure. It's just handled. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's great. Yeah. Well, guys, I really appreciate you guys coming on. I think this appreciate has been you. awesome information. I think it you know helps clear a lot of questions. That I think people probably maybe subconsciously have in the back of their mind, and maybe now it's you know when they get to meet with you guys, it will have a clearer mm -hmm. picture. Um, love to have you guys back on to talk about we how things have that. been, you know, moving forward and you know maybe Definitely. changing technology mm -hmm. and whatever it is. So, yeah. Corey, thank you so much for having us as your, as your guest today. Absolutely, it's been really appreciated. absolutely. This guy, this is awesome, guys. Thanks so much. Great. Terrific. All right. Thanks, thank Corey. you. Bye. Cool, man. Thanks again for tuning in to this episode of Who's in the House. If you still have questions, feel free to email us at info at who's in the house, D E as in Delaware.com. You can also call or text any questions to 302 466 5511. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. And in the meantime, keep an eye out for our next episodes. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.